Hello, this is Annette Rabel from the University of Kentucky. Um, the following presentation will cover ITE keywords related to ERS, the Enhanced Recovery After Surgery Algorithm. Good news, there are not many keywords, so therefore this should be a relatively short presentation. Um, however, um, something that like we have been struggling with in previous ITEs, so please pay close attention. All right, first things first, what is ERS, uh, Enhanced Recovery After Surgery? It is a patient-centered, evidence-based, multidisciplinary team approach with the goal to reduce the patient's surgical stress, to optimize the physiological response to the surgical stress, to facilitate patient recovery, allowing an earlier discharge and returning to baseline normal function. So here's the structure of the enhanced recovery after surgery um, algorithm as, and there are certain modifications depending on which surgical area it has been applied to. But the structures are that there are three different components, and I cannot emphasize to you enough how important it is that this is a multidisciplinary approach. So in a preoperative area, very important to target the right patient cohort and to educate the patient, uh, patient uh, involved. There needs to be an active, involved patient to make this successful. Then, a medical and nutritional optimization process. Also here, dietitian, nutritional specialists should be involved in this. Um, anemia optimization and glucose control optimization, obvious. Smoke and alcohol cessation, obvious. And then certain actions which we will review in more detail, the shortening of the fasting time, the carbohydrate load, and if applicable, also HIPAA plans, antibiotic prophylaxis to initiate uh, in the preoperative period. Then there's modifications in the interoperative period. Um, from like a long early recovery, obviously you wanna have a short acting anesthetic approach, uh, opiate sparing, multimodal an analgesia. Um, and from all the other um, steps here, obviously, it's very much uh, geared to what, what kind of surgical cohort you're looking at. Uh, we will talk about certain aspects also in more detail. In the end, it all comes together in the post-operative period. Everything which has been accomplished pre-operative and interoperative needs to be carried through. You know, a chain is only as strong as the weakest link. So if any element doesn't work optimally, obviously you cannot get the benefits in the post-operative period. So again, short acting, multimodal analgesia, um, a goal-directed fluid therapy, um, everything needs to be geared to return this patient as early to function as possible. So early extubation, early mobility, avoiding um, agents which are linked to um, delirium development and uh, post-operative cognitive dysfunction. Um, uh, and obviously our surgical colleagues like early drain and Foley removal allowing early embolization, you know, re-establishing re early nutrition early as possible, um, obviously are crucial in here. So this is another graph uh, trying to depict to you um, how many modifications we have made um, for ERS, uh, to accommodate the goals of ERS. Um, and in preoperative phase, kind of like you know, the reduction of premedication to no premedication, uh, the modification of bowel preparation, um, the education of patients preoperatively. Um, obviously, you know, modifications here to uh, um, allow our patients, uh, you know, being less impaired postoperatively. Interoperatively, from uh, short acting, multimodal, utilizing regional anesthesia, a more conscientious fluid administration um, and uh, maintaining normal thermia. Um, these are the highlights of the interoperative phase modification. And I'm not saying like we're not doing this to patients or, which are not in the ERS algorithm. Some of them obviously applies to all our patients. But then here in the postoperative phase, that's where really a lot of things changed from getting patients out of bed early. Um, 
getting uh, folic catheters and drains removed early, not having NG tubes in play, uh, place. Um, as conscientious as are with uh, food administration intraoperatively, allowing early establishing of PO intake, also crucial, okay, um, that uh, this happens um, to allow a patient to achieve its normal balance. Uh, talking about the ITE content, a lot of this was geared towards the ERS um, algorithm modification of fluid management. So step one, preoperatively, um, we are encouraging the patient to uh, consume clear liquids until two hours preoperatively. True goal, the patient does not present uh, with a fluid deficit, so therefore the IV fluid, which is not really physiological, it's close to physiological, but all IV fluids we're using is not 100% physiological. So therefore, if a patient is not um, hypovolemic, you don't need to hydrate that much aggressively interoperatively. Um, and then interoperatively for um, laparoscopic or small incision type of procedures, your balanced crystalloid um, IV fluid rate is one to two uh, ml per kilo per hour, and then in the intermittent fluid boluses as needed to replace losses. Uh, every protocol emphasizes that maintain normal volemia, but you will not get much guidance what normal volemia means. Um, as you all know, this is very difficult in the operatively um, due to lack of monitoring um, when you are normal volemia. Um, I've depicted here that Frank Stalin curve. Um, just to express a little bit like you now what, what we mean with euvolemia or normal volemia. Um, uh, the concept of goal-directed therapy um, means or, or yeah, emphasizes the individualized IV fluid management using more information, flow-based um, uh, diameters, to, opti uh, to achieve something called the stroke volume optimization. So those, going back to the Frank Stalin curve, so obviously when you are um, a low preload and still want to have an um, a increase in stroke volume, um, you will have a high stroke volume variability. Um, and as a dynamic indices, this you know, allows you to predict that if I give fluid, I will um, get an increase in stroke volume. So that's a patient with a SVV or PVV of, uh, uh, on the higher side, it's a patient who is more on the hypovolemic uh, part of the curve. Versus, now you have a patient who um, has an SVV uh, low, less than 9%, so here, this dynamic indices would uh, predict that this uh, patient would not respond to a fluid balance, a fluid bolus with increase uh, in, in stroke volume um, because uh, the patient is, not, is, is more than normal volemic or may even be hypervolemic. So you want to keep your patient in the sweet spot right there when this curve breaks, right? When from I'm getting a good response to my fluid load, to my increase in preload versus um, um, I'm not getting an increase in stroke volume uh, related to my increase in preload. So this goal-directed therapy um, means use uh, other parameters to uh, optimize your hemodynamic situation, um, the uh, pulse pressure variability or stroke volume variability. Um, the goal-directed therapy benefits still, you know, if you use those parameters, those indices, um, still has not really shown that it has a significant impact on patient's outcome. Another area um, unique to the ERS uh, algorithm are the nutritional strategies. Core part of uh, that approach is to avoid the long periods of preoperative fasting. So clear liquids until two hours before surgery. In the ERS algorithm also states to use carbohydrate rich drinks for hydration. So two to three hours before surgery, a patient should um, get about, uh, I think, 
20 grams of uh, carbohydrate containing uh, drink at minimum. It has been shown that this reduces the post-operative protein loss by keeping the patient metabolically fat state, therefore maintaining body mass and muscle strength, also decreases insulin resistance. The carbohydrate um, drink two hours before surgery also reduces preoperative thirst, therefore stress, therefore anxiety. And it has shown to that it may reduce the length of stay after major abdominal surgeries. The benefit has not been shown for a laparoscopic surgery. Essential to the preoperative optimization is also that postoperatively the oral intake is established and tolerated as early as possible. In addition, metabolic control, starting with the preoperative optimization here guided by the hemoglobin A1C, but also perioperatively, um, you want to maintain a reasonable blood glucose concentration, therefore metabolic control. This may be difficult due to the stress response in the preoperative stress. Also, that is part of the nutritional strategy, um, early postoperative mobilization to strengthen the protein synthesis and muscle function. And also, therefore, here you don't want to at that point create a catabolic state by not providing um, a reasonable amount of nutrition, meaning carbohydrates and protein and fat appropriate to the patient's consumption. Nutritional guidance, dietitian. Uh, is encouraged. Another essential component of uh, the ERS protocol is pain management. The hallmark is to minimize our opioid use to implement a multimodal analgesia regimen. Preoperatively, consider azomethacin either by mouth or IV if a patient doesn't tolerate um, IV. Again, azomethacin is very well absorbed and has a high bioavailability, so PO is almost as good as IV if a patient tolerates. Um, also, consider COX-2 inhibitors or NSAIDs uh, by mouth and gabapentin if a uh, patient uh, in surgery would benefit from um, uh, gabapentin. Interoperatively, regional anesthesia and axial anesthesia uh, should be very much considered either as an adjunct or as an anesthesia technique. If general anesthesia is needed, you can think ketamine, uh, lidocaine infusion, or magnesium infusions. Uh, magnesium to enhance uh, the opiate sensitivity. And um, if you are using opiates, you should consider short-acting opiates. Now, in the post-op period, you can redose azomethacin. You can redose or start your NSAIDs and COX-2 inhibitors if uh, the surgical um, and uh, other comorbidities allow. Um, if you start a carbapentin preoperatively, also here you want to think if you want to continue that. Um, and if uh, uh, analgesia is needed, um, and if you uh, were not able to uh, use regional anesthesia to supplement uh, ketamine infusion and uh, by mouth opiates also, can be used in the post-operative time period. All right, not too many keywords, and I don't think it's rocket science or too complex. Just certain things just to keep in mind what makes ERS different. Um, and so thank you very much for your attention. Good luck.